DAMS brings you second year MBBS course. Two-way interactive teaching platform for NEAT PG. Interact and learn with live teaching. Available on both Android and iOS. Weekly live class. Second year recorded. Practical courses. Online test series. DAMS Question Bank Goat Edition. Join us at DAMS eMedico's app now. So first is RBC count. What do we do? Okay, for that we need to have what RBC pipette. Okay, what is the RBC pipette? How do I identify? Remember, this part is called as the stem of the pipette here. Yes, this is your stem of the pipette. Now, what is happening with the stem? Okay, there are markings in the stem. Tell me now, what are the markings? This is your stem. There is a marking of 0.5. There is a marking of 1. And this part is the bulb of the pipette. This is your what? Stem of the pipette. And maximum marking is 101 for an RBC pipette. How do I identify the RBC pipette? By two things or three things. Best is what? Marking. Maximum marking will be 101. Otherwise, you can use the mouthpiece. Look at this. The mouthpiece is what color? Red in color. And even the bead is also what? Red in color. So red color coded for what? RBC pipette. Now, have a look here. Have a look here. First of all, look here. This is your orphan Annie eye. So orphan Annie eye ka eyes and orphan Annie ke doggy ka eyes, they are ditto ditto same to same my cells also. Clear, optically clear nuclei. Ekdam khali khali clear cells. So jaise orphan Annie ka eye, vaisi mere cells. So all these are your orphan Annie eye optically clear nuclei. But sometimes in this optically clear nuclei, you see what? Have a look here pseudo inclusions as a that this is something inside the nucleus so pseudo inclusions this is also a pseudo inclusion right now look here again look here again also again this is a pseudo inclusion this is a pseudo inclusion along with that can you notice notice what is this grooving can you notice what is this yes grooving grooving on the fifth day of the embryonic life the one of the X chromosome gets genetically inactive because of this RNA. So remember, this function of this RNA, this RNA inhibit X chromosome that is responsible for Leon hypothesis. Occurs on fifth day of embryonic life. Now, what will happen to that inactive X? I'm sure all of you know this inactive X is seen in interface nucleus as I'm sure you know. I'm sure you know bar bodies. So one X is X is genetically active. What has happened to other X? Other X, the inactive X, is seen in the interface nucleus as darkly stained nuclear mass so in the interface nucleus when you look at the nucleus in the interface in that nucleus of the interface will give you darkly stained nuclear masses normally when you take biopsy from oral epithelial cells the swab from oral epithelial cells the swab from oral epithelial cells on the interface when you see the nucleus you have dark stained nuclear mass i hope all of you can appreciate oral epithelial cells this is the nucleus and in the nucleus you see this darkly stained nuclear masses and I'm sure you know this. These are what nothing but bar bodies. Inverted U sign. Inverted U sign. If take the baby flaccid like this. And this is class to is difficile. Hospital acquired diarrhea, pseudomembranous qualities, clindamycin, amino penicillins, everything. Two toxins A and B and this is colonoscopy picture, pseudomembranous qualities. Treatment vancomycin. Best is fidaxomycin. Next, tetany, tetanospasmin, GABA and glycine release, spastic paralysis, drumstick appearance, swarming, stately motility, puncture wound. And see, this is called opisthotonus or hyperreflexia. Beautiful picture. Opisthotonus or hyperreflexia. Sufficient. Follow the flashcard. After reading the textbook, or my full notes then you see the flashcard you can enjoy you can uh, manipulate it easily without knowing anything just to see the opisthotonus you can't understand anything hope you will understand the importance of these pictures when you talk about methacholine i told methacholine a selective m2 agonist now all of you please watch me on super important point look here in the bronchus 
in the bronchial smooth muscle we have m3 receptor in the bronchial smooth muscle we have m3 just watch normally physiologically m3 action is causing bronchospasm bronchospasm normally stimulation of m3 causing bronchospasm now what i want to say if i give methacholine for you or if i take methacholine methacholine is a predominantly m2 m2 agonist it is mainly 99 percentage it acting mainly on m2 less than 1 percentage it may act on m1 m3 also but these actions are not significant not significant so infertility issues infertility issues are there now implantation is already there second number so now you will see implantation do not occur that means abortion and organogenesis the organ defects are there organ defects so it is up to 8 8 weeks 2 to 8 weeks 2 to 8 weeks so you will see from after 2 weeks from the 15th day up to 55 days that is implantation organogenesis stage and then growth and development defect growth and development so from the 9 week to 9 month so this time is also important initial 2 weeks 2 to 8 weeks and after 9 weeks so growth and development defect so growth defect iugr iud these are due to third one so all these three possibilities are there from infertility to abortion to organ defects to iugr most commonly you will see this second one implantation issue organogenesis first one infertility many patients they don't have idea it is because of the drug only so they don't report iugr again most of the patients are aware we already told them not to use the drug so it is less common but this is by mistake very common 